In this video I'm going to show you how to commission the Sungro CX series inverters by using the Wi-Fi dongle. That's the IM4 dongle. Uh, it's very similar for the Logo 1000, uh, only a couple of small minor differences. Uh, but this is how we do it on the dongle, which is in most cases of the time. Now the first thing you need to do is use a laptop. And of course, I'm going to point out we have already initialized the inverter and we have already created the plant on the iSolar Cloud. So you open up your Wi-Fi settings and you look for the dongle serial number, which is this one here, and we will connect to that. And then you open up any browser and you go to the address bar and type 11.11.11.1, enter. And we are now into the interface. So we are logged into the dongle itself. So first thing we do is put the password in here, PW1111. And you can click on that little eye thing. That'll show you. And then log in. So what it shows us here is uh, the item number one network configuration. We haven't configured the network. Um, so we need to go down to WLAN configuration. Click there switch the WLAN on. Now this will scan for Wi-Fi networks. So I'm looking for our Wi-Fi network here at the office. So I'll just give that a moment uh, until it finds the networks. There we go. So let's have a look. Okay, now this is the one I want here. Uh, bear in mind it's 2.4 gigahertz. Don't use a 5 gigahertz. And our password is secret. that and save there we go operation successful now I just need to close this down by clicking this little box here and you can see here I have connected the Wi-Fi it's got a green tick and because I previously created a plant on iSolar Cloud we are communicating with iSolar Cloud now before you leave the screen just scroll down we do have to enable the remote maintenance. So we just check that box there. And it will do that via the iSolar Cloud and I should get a confirmation on here. There we go, confirmation. Now it is set to the international server by default and I'll show you how to change that later. But we can go to the next screen here. Okay, so this pop-up box here and that tells me that there's basically automatically scans for inverters. So we just confirm here. Make sure all your inverters are listed here. I've only got the one, and that's got a nice little green tick beside it, so I know it's, it's scanned. Just go into the initial parameter setting here and click that. Now, as I say, I had previously um, commissioned the inverter with the initialization, and I set the country and the grid codes. So I'll just click continue, and this is what the configuration was. So I'll just wait that to load and then I'll click the settings and that should save it. Now this is sending data up to the iSolar Cloud as well, so I'll just click that. There we go, so successful. Now we don't need to query the parameters because I already know they've been done. Now, in this case I have a meter connected, but it's showing a zero at the moment. If you don't have a meter, you can skip this. But in order to add the meter, I add device up here, click that, and I'll get this pop-up box. So I select the type, which is meter, and access type. Now you click in here, it gives you a couple of options, but uh, if you think about it, this is basically for normally for export control. So you're gonna have the meter down at the grid side and not at the inverter side. So it's a, it's a gateway meter there. So you just click that, and then click out of the box to refresh the screen. Uh, Comport 1, there's no other option for that. If you are using a logger and you've connected the meter the, to the A2B2 or the A3B3, that will be COM2 or COM3. Uh, device model, we just click there and I find, and it is a DTSU666 in this case here. The beginning address is always 254. And you just scroll down and save. There we go, operation successful. And you can see here, if I go on there, the meter's connected and I've got my green dot. So I just click next. Now, as I say, I've already created the plant, so all the information's there, and it will just gather that information from the, uh, the iSolar Cloud, and you can check it all here. You don't need to 
enter anything else there and you can actually skip this process here so just click skip and it will take us to the overview you can get download a report if you like by clicking this box here but just have a quick look make sure everything's okay as you set it up and you click complete now there's a couple of other things that you need to do don't worry about this shutdown status here because I've got no AC connected to the inverter but there is one or two other things you need to do so if you go into system on, and go into transfer configuration it will say international server we need to set, change that to Australian so just click on the gear wheel here click on there select Australian server save and confirm there we go, Australian server. Now, just one more thing, just uh, if you go into remote maintenance here, on the left, you just save. Now, what that will give you is it will connect to the remote server. So this is connecting to the correct server now, and it will give you some information, passwords uh, for r remote login. And you just confirm that there. You can have a look at it if you want. And confirm, and it will give you this box here. So what you can do is you can either copy the information or you can send it to an email box here but I'm not going to do either so I'm just going to close that box okay one more thing uh, you're going to device monitoring uh, and select the meter now if you have a CT meter connected here you got to go in here and go into initial parameter and you have to set the CT transformer ratio so for example if you had 100 slash 5 CTs you would set this to 20 and save but we don't have CTs on this because it's a DTSU 666 so we don't need to worry there um, you go down to power control and select active power now this is for the export control this is the last step so we go to the drop down box and select local power control uh, the power limit in case of meter communication now for example I have a 30 kilowatt inverter now supposing my export limit is 15 kilowatts I could lose communication to the meter and it may export 30 kilowatts so I want to st I want to make sure that doesn't happen so 15 kilowatts happens to be 50 percent of 30 kilowatts so I set that to 50 percent and that means the the, the the guarantees no more than 50 percent or the 50 kilowatts will export if we lose c communication with the meter uh, control method closed loop because it's all in RS-485 wiring we select that we select the meter type which in this case is a TTSU-666 uh, you don't need to do any other of these You're just going down to the instruction type and select kilowatts and then check this little box here and put in 15 kilowatts in there if you make a mess of it you can clear the data and save okay that's everything done now normally I say you into general information it's shut down because there's no AC but under normal circumstances you should start being able to see all the data there and that's all there is to it